This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at entropy and spontaneity. A spontaneous process is a process that occurs without adding energy, other than the energy required to overcome the energy barrier. A spontaneous process can be compared to a ball rolling down a hill. Once the ball is given an initial push, it will roll to the bottom of the hill, which is the lowest energy state. A non-spontaneous process can be compared to a ball rolling up a hill. To get the ball to the top of the hill, energy must be continuously supplied. Spontaneous processes can be either fast or slow. Here we have two examples of spontaneous processes. Combustion is a fast spontaneous process, whereas rusting is a slow spontaneous process. So the spontaneity of a process tells us nothing about the speed at which the process takes place. According to the second law of thermodynamics, for a spontaneous process the change in entropy of the universe must be positive. The total change in entropy is equal to the change in entropy of the system plus the change in entropy of the surroundings. So for a spontaneous process, the total change in entropy must be greater than zero. It must be positive. The temperature of the surroundings affects the entropy change when heat is added. From this equation, we can see that the change in entropy of the surroundings is equal to the negative enthalpy change of the system divided by the temperature. So this equation tells us that the change in entropy of the surroundings is directly related to an opposite change in the heat of the system and inversely related to the temperature of the surroundings before the heat is added. So from this relationship, we can see that heat added to low temperature surroundings has a greater effect than heat added to high temperature surroundings. Next, we'll use this equation to calculate the total change in entropy for the freezing of water at two different temperatures. When water freezes, the change in entropy of the system is negative 22.0 joules per Kelvin mole. The change in entropy of the system is negative because solids have lower entropy than liquids. The change in enthalpy of the system is negative 6.01 kilojoules per mole. This tells us that the freezing of water is exothermic. For our first example, we'll calculate the total entropy change for the freezing of water at negative 10 degrees, which is 263 Kelvin. So first, we use the equation the change in entropy of the surroundings is equal to the negative enthalpy change of the system divided by the temperature in Kelvin. This gives us a change in entropy of the surroundings of positive 22.9 joules per Kelvin mole. So next, we'll calculate the total entropy change. So that's the entropy change of the system plus the entropy change of the surroundings, which gives us a total entropy change of positive 0.9 joules per Kelvin mole. This positive value for the total change in entropy tells us that the freezing of water is spontaneous at 263 Kelvin. Next, we'll calculate the total change in entropy for the freezing of water at 10 degrees, which is 283 Kelvin. So once again, we use this equation, but instead we change the temperature to 283 Kelvin. This gives us a change in entropy of the surroundings of positive 21.2 joules per Kelvin mole. When we calculate the total entropy change, we get a value of negative 0.8 joules per Kelvin mole. This negative value for the total change in entropy tells us that the freezing of water is non-spontaneous at 283 Kelvin. So to summarize, for a spontaneous process, the total change in entropy must be greater than zero. For the freezing of water at 263 Kelvin, the total change in entropy is greater than zero, which means that this is a spontaneous process at this temperature. For the same process at 283 Kelvin, the total change in entropy was less than zero which means that this process is non-spontaneous at this temperature. Next, we look at the spontaneity of exothermic and endothermic reactions. In an exothermic reaction, heat lost by the system is gained by the surroundings. So for an exothermic reaction, the change in enthalpy of the system is negative and the change in entropy of the surroundings is positive. For an endothermic reaction, heat gained by the system is lost by the surroundings. 
So for an endothermic reaction, the change in enthalpy of the system is positive and the change in entropy of the surroundings is negative. So there are two possible combinations for exothermic reactions, one that results in an increase in entropy of the system and one that results in a decrease in entropy of the system. In the diagram on the left, the change in enthalpy of the system is negative and the change in entropy of the system is positive. So for an exothermic reaction that results in an increase in entropy of the system, the total change in entropy is positive irrespective of the change in entropy of the surroundings. In the diagram on the right, we have a negative change in the enthalpy of the system and also in the entropy of the system. So for an exothermic reaction that results in a decrease in entropy of the system, the total change in entropy can only be positive if the change in entropy of the surroundings is greater than the change in entropy of the system. Next, we look at endothermic reactions. On the left, we have an endothermic reaction that results in an increase in entropy of the system. For this type of reaction, the total change in entropy can only be positive if the change in entropy of the surroundings is less than the change in entropy of the system. In other words, the reaction can only be spontaneous if the increase in entropy of the system is large enough to cancel out the decrease in entropy of the surroundings. And on the right, we have an endothermic reaction in which the change in entropy of the system and the change in entropy of the surroundings are both negative. As we can see, for this type of reaction, the total change in entropy can never be positive. Therefore, the process is non-spontaneous. So we'll finish the video by having a look at some example reactions. Our first reaction is the combustion of solid glucose to produce gaseous carbon dioxide and gaseous water vapor. The change in entropy of this system is positive as we go from 6 moles of gaseous reactants to 12 moles of gaseous products. The change in entropy of the surroundings is also positive as heat is released from the system to the surroundings. Therefore, the total change in entropy is positive and the reaction is spontaneous. The next reaction is between solid calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas to produce solid calcium carbonate. The entropy change of the system is negative because we have one mole of gas and one mole of solid producing one mole of solid in the products. Because this is an exothermic reaction, the heat released increases the entropy of the surroundings. This makes the total entropy change positive and the reaction is spontaneous. Our final reaction is that between barium hydroxide octahydrate and ammonium nitrate. In this reaction we have 3 moles of solid reactants forming a total of 13 moles of aqueous ions and molecules. This represents a very large increase in the entropy of the system. The change in entropy of the surroundings is negative because this is an endothermic reaction. However, the total change in entropy is positive due to the large increase in the entropy of the system.